Hello, Jeff Zwerink again. Welcome to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore fascinating scientific topics and how they equip and help you be more confident in the Christian faith so that you can share it with others. Today, we're joined by Hugh Ross, and we are going to discuss how Earth has so little water. Hugh, good to have you here on the show again today. Well, thank you. So this, in some sense, seems like a ludicrous question. I mean, we've got water covering 70% of the Earth, miles deep. It seems like there's an incredible amount of water. How is it that we're claiming Earth has so little water? Well, it's only a few miles deep. I mean, the Earth is 8,000 miles in diameter, so when you add up the total quantity of water, it's about 0.03% of its total mass. And when we're actually looking at exoplanets that are most Earth-like, where we can actually measure the chemistry, they're coming in at 5 to 50% total water content. Well, okay, so let's explore that. Can we actually measure the amount of water that are on these exoplanets? I mean, I know we can do that in our solar system quite well. Well, we can if we've got a transit. In other words, if a planet is transiting in front of its star, uh, you get the chemical signature of the star, then you get the chemical signature of the two, and then the planet. So, so yeah. this we get occasionally, not often. Oh, no, but on, there's on, only on a few occasions. planets okay. where we actually have this much data. So, so when we look in our solar system, I mean, everybody always talks about how if we find a little bit of water, that obviously means life's there. Um, isn't that what we see as we look through our solar system, that there's basically just no water anywhere? There's a lot of water in our solar system. Such as? Well, like if you look at uh, the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, they're running between 25 and 65 percent total water content. Now, most of it's frozen, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there's a lot of water there. If you look at the comets, they're 85 percent water. And, you know, we both know that uh, water is the third most abundant molecule in the universe. Mm -hmm. I remind audiences, our universe is soaking wet. So there's water everywhere. But the amazing thing is how little water our planet Earth has. Well, so presumably where that comes into play is that if you don't have any water, that's obviously that's a problem. Bad, right? But if you've got too much water, you basically have no land because the water's so deep that all you have is You won't get continents on the surface, you're right. And then you won't be able to recycle the nutrients. Okay, so what is it that happened to Earth that leaves us with such little water, if you will? Well, I wrote a blog on this on my August 6th, uh, Today's New Reason to Believe, making the point that there's new discoveries that are actually exploring for us in a definitive way where we got our water. We do know that the moon forming event where Earth, primordial Earth collided with a planet they call Thea, mm -hmm. uh, got rid of a lot of our water. Some models said all of our water. The new study is saying maybe a tiny amount of the water that Earth had in the beginning actually survived the moon forming event. And then the rest of the water came from uh, comets. So, so, so the idea is Earth forms, there's a lot of water in the solar oh, yeah. system. Earth it's form... going to have an incredible amount of water. Yeah, we're talking thousands of miles deep oceans. Okay, so some, so this uh, Mars-sized collider comes in, hits the planet, does so in a way that ejects most of the water out into space, gets right. rid of it from the planet. Some's left over, we get some from comets, and we end up with something which is very habitable like Earth is today. Well, what's interesting is we have exactly the amount of water we need for advanced life. Not too much, not too little. And if you look at our solar system, it has comet and asteroid belts that are unique. We don't see them in any other uh, exoplanetary system. And then we got the moon forming event, which is also unique. So it's basically telling us our water content is highly fine-tuned. If it wasn't for these events and the design of our solar system being exactly the way it is, We'd either have too little water on the Earth or too much. We have exactly what we need. So let's let's go explore that just a little bit. You mentioned that uh, there's water from the primordial Earth there's gotten rid of through this collider event, and then we get some from the asteroids and comets. Um, how how does that play out? What what sort of quantity are we getting from that? What is, what are the discoveries you talk about in your blog uh, alluding to there? Well, the articles that I cite are talking about how they're looking at the water content of different kinds of asteroids and comets, mm -hmm. and you know they vary. Some are water rich, some are very water poor, some are almost bone dry, and then trying to discern okay what was the water content uh, when the Earth was very young. That's a little more difficult to discern. But basically they're saying that for the first time we're actually being able to identify the primordial sources of uh, Earth's water post the moon collision event. 
and there's still some debate going on, but the bottom line is it is fine-tuned. Okay, so it sounds like this isn't settled that we know, okay, we've got everything mapped out. There's at least four different sources of the water from okay. three different kinds of meteorites and asteroids. And then, again, how much water might have survived the moon forming event. So there's a little bit of debate there, but we do know these four sources have to be fine-tuned. So if we don't know how much gave what, how do we say it's fine-tuned, if you will? Because the total. Okay. We know that each of these four sources contributed something, uh, but the total is, I think, what is significant. So the idea being there that if we'd gotten rid of all the water and there was not enough water in the comets, we wouldn't have any water on Earth. If we hadn't gotten rid of any of the water and none replenished, we would also have this enormous abundance of water and we wouldn't have a planet with continents and everything that yeah. life requires. 0.03% is what we need. We also need uh, more water than just what's on the surface in order to have the dynamics of the interior of the Earth be just right so the continents will form. Just briefly, if you were out engaging a skeptic talking about this, what would you bring or how would you use that to engage the skeptic with a gospel message? Have you ever thought about how fine-tuned the quantity of our water on planet Earth is? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have. Yeah, very good, so. Well, thanks, you. I appreciate sure. your comments. Water is just one of those things that we almost take for granted. It's everywhere on Earth, and so we assume that it's just that way in the universe. But what we find is we dig in and look at the details of this incredible substance. We find that there's great evidence for fine-tuning. Earth has enough water, but not too much water. And that points towards the work of a creator, preparing Earth so that it can host life. You know, I'd encourage you to go check out Hugh's blog on this. Go to reasons.org and search for Earth's fine-tuned water, and you'll get more details that you can use to go out and share with others your faith in Christ.